Welcome to That Game Show, the awkward, inappropriate, random podcast that occasionally talks about games. What's up, everybody? Welcome to That Game Show. I am your host, Chase Bunker, joined alongside, as always, as Kyle Helmstetter. Kyle, how are you? You didn't do the countdown, so I wasn't ready. Yeah, I know. There's a reason. Like, I've, you would have thought, like, as we approach 100 episodes, I would know some of the shenanigans that you do. So I'm trying my best to play a little defense to your shenanigans. So do you want me just to now go ahead and just jump the gun and be like, <laughs> That sounded like you just had a seizure. Because it was also like your internet cutting out, it was your mm. microphone cutting out, and it was just a horrific mess of audio. Do you know what a seizure sounds like? No, I don't. Mm. Anyway, yeah, uh, thank you all very much for listening. Hopefully you're either watching us on YouTube or if you're listening to us on any of our podcasting platforms, thank you for making us a part of your day. Uh, Kyle recently just got done with a 24-hour stream to help raise awareness to the, what was the, it was uh, a mental illness uh, or, or mental illness awareness or was the it was yeah, we were so we were raising money um in regards to mental illness uh, there's mm-hmm. a there's an institution here in center in orlando although they have they have multiple different like locations like there's one in new jersey mm-hmm. uh they do have one in los angeles um so yeah it was just for nami so we were just the national uh, alliance against mental illnesses and uh yeah our goal was just to, to raise a nice little 100 dollars. that was our our little goal and mm-hmm. We raised it in the first two hours, so yeah. it was a good. It was a good day. <laughs> yeah, that was good. Like, I wish I could have been able to do it. So Kyle originally said, "Hey, I want to do a twenty-four hour stream," and I just said, "Why? Why would you do yeah. that? Considering we did it before and we had fun in the beginning, uh, it turned into a train wreck shortly after. Mm. Why would you want to do it again?" Did and you know what happened a second time? Who would have guessed it? Yes, like streaming is tough streaming for 24 hours is just downright insane like that's the crazier thing about it but um he he manned up the helm on that he raised a whole bunch of mo- uh, bunch of money for nami and it is not easy and so i applaud you for at least like getting the number of donations and getting like you're reaching your goal essentially you know, I will say this. Uh, there was a point in time, probably on like 1 a.m., where I was just kind of like lounging. I was mm-hmm. playing Civ Five, and uh, I think there was only like two people watching. And um, I was just like sitting there. At one point, I'm like, you know, streaming is hard. And I don't mean just because I've been doing it now for over 14 hours. I also mean it's just hard because it's like you don't get big numbers. And I don't think mm-hmm. that's something that's really discussed amongst the like streaming community, but not only that, like with no- like, normal people, right? Like I told my friends, Hey, I'm streaming for 24 hours. And they're like, Oh cool. Like how many people do you pull in? And I'm like, I don't know how to tell you that it doesn't eclipse 10 at a time. So th- that's one of the things when I started streaming, I, w- I wish I had more time. I've just been constantly just working and all that. When I started streaming, I would do Hearthstone and it would just get to the point where I would like I would just get tired of carrying the conversation. Mm-hmm. Like because it, it's hard to just like put forth effort into something to get you want just minimal return and you don't get yeah. any and it's very deflating. And so That's when crazy. I started doing uh puzzle games that's when I started seeing a little bit of a return where I started seeing more and more people. And then it makes it a lot easier. Like streaming with people makes it a lot easier. Mm -hmm. But the problem is like, and this is the same with podcasts. Like whenever I do solo shows of uh, bunkers, burning hot, take the sports podcast. I eventually just get tired of my own voice where I'm just like, all right, I'm about 10 minutes in. I'm tired of hearing it. And I just wrap it up. Three things. First of all, great plug. Love the love the smooth transition. Thank Real you. butter-like. It was mm-hmm. great. Uh, you, did you grease up before you came on the show? Yes, I did. Yes. Obviously. Uh-huh. Uh, two, I also get tired of your voice. So, you know, don't feel too bad. Rude. Um, 
I got to give you one. I got to take one. That's mm-hmm. kind of how this works. Uh, and three, you know, uh, shout out to uh, K Dog, Mahi Mati, and uh, there were a few people in the chat that were, you know, they were talking. Um, but Mahi Mati and uh, K Dog joined me on the stream. Uh, actually, we played Overwatch with both of them. Um, so they helped out a lot. And that was, you're right. It makes it so much better when there's somebody else with you because you can just enjoy a conversation that's not like unidimensional and Mm -hmm. you go crazy because you're like i think they're responding to me in the chat but i also saw the viewer count go down by one and now i'm not so sure that they're here anymore (laughs) yeah it's definitely one of those where and i think you and i i think you like early on you talked about doing a solo show for that game show like when one of us couldn't make it i think it was like you thought about the idea and I was like, nah, you don't want that. You don't want this game. And then, mm. yeah, years later, of course, but yeah. Years it, later, I'm doing it some, some, somewhat, really. Yeah. It's not really doing it. It's well, like, you know. well, streaming now, like, especially with, the, with what Twitch is going f- through with, like, their payouts, it's like, it's not very sustainable anymore unless you get signed mm-hmm. by either Kick or YouTube, uh, those are really like the two major ones because Facebook gaming is kind of gone by the wayside. But, yeah. Like it's, it's not sustainable anymore. It is not lucrative. You're right. And maybe that's part of it. It's also like, do you ever notice or do you ever feel, I don't know how often you go on Twitch and browse that the selection of games it's, it's diverse, but it's also like, it is very narrow at the same time. It, it is like, it's a lot of the rich get richer where it's yep. like okay yeah i okay cool like you're gonna put xqc on the front page i could find xqc anywhere like exactly i don't mind some of the other ones but like the my other thing is like when you watch one platform or one let me phrase that when you watch one game or you watch like one topic once like your entire feed is flooded with it where it's that. like that's I've mm-hmm. had what was it? I watched one just chatting, and it was for uh, Heart Scale. My friend Katie, uh, Katie Atkins, uh, she does streaming now, so like she did just chatting. So I watched it to get her viewership up, and then all of a sudden, I'm getting hit with so much just chatting. And it's like, no, I don't want to talk about this. Like I just wanted, like I just watched it once from somebody that I've been following for a long time. Like there's no reason for this, and so. Mm-hmm. If I started going to frequently going to just chatting chat rooms, then I can understand that. But it's it, it's it's weird. It's like you look you go on a website once, and then all of a sudden they're like, "Hey, you want this, 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 and this, right?" It's like, uh, no, no, Captain, no. Yeah, no, I don't. Yeah. But you're right. Uh, the algorithm is very is very uh, irregular. I definitely feel weird about how like it is hard to kind of find people and things and stuff like that Mm -hmm. um one of the other things that uh i was actually having a chat with somebody that was probably around the 2 30 maybe three o'clock mark um this one guy or this one person joined the stream um and i was like hey like you know what what you uh what you doing and they're like oh just browsing really just kind of searching the 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 deep forms of, of twitch and i'm like do you do this often they're like yeah, it's the only way I can find new people because there's no way to find them. And I'm like, hey, yo, retweet, though, because you're right. Like, it is so impossible to find genuinely enjoyable streamers that you don't already see, like, on the front page plastered. And some of them aren't even enjoyable sometimes. Like, it's not that they're bad because they're really good at what they do. It's more just, like, you almost feel like they're playing it out for a sponsorship at some points. Well, I think also a lot of it is once you reach a certain height, you don't talk with chat anymore it's no longer it's no longer the makeshift radio show Mm -hmm. with a camera it's a this is me this is my own thing i'm gonna try and then eventually there's like all right let me just go with these other big streamers and ignore chat and i feel like that's just granted when you have ten thousand people in chat it is very difficult to keep up with it so i can understand that but at the same time it's like there's got to be some interaction here. It is sad to see in a, in a way because like it like I was telling I think I was talking to the person in the chat about it. They were like, you know, do you just stream for fun? And I'm like, yeah, we don't. I mean, we don't 
make money off of the streams we don't have like the big subscription and plans and all that stuff it's just genuinely like you know we we stream because it's fun we enjoy it and it's a it's a cool way to interact with people mm -hmm. pretty much like cons like we we don't go to cons to get paid either no so it's fun it's like an enjoyable way to interact with like-minded people um i feel like you almost lose that when you become that level of big streaming mm -hmm. it's a job now it's no longer a do it for fun and have have a chill time with it it's like no you're you know it's like the it's like the meme with the you know the the sex deprived meme where it's like hey it's time for your five o'clock you know milking and they're like no how the hell did you get that comparison you never saw that meme no mm. i'll send it to you no no you sure yeah, I'm Damn. positive. No, no. I'm oh, you're positive you want me to send it? No. God, no. no. Okay. I'll send it anyway, just in case. Chase Bunker. What kind of ice um, cream flavor is that? Uh, this is um, the Hershey brownie batter. Ooh. Mm, it's very tasty. It's like, uh, it's kind of actually like getting a PlayStation showcase in the middle of the week. Kyle Helmstetter. What a great endorsement. You should just yeah. do if we ever we get sponsorships, I feel like oh. I, I I dread the day that we get it because I don't know how it's gonna be. It's going to be a beautiful mess. I would love the day to get an endorsement from PlayStation because I would single handedly do nothing for their sales. This is that game show. So when I got this new computer, it came with uh, three months of Game Pass. And it, which was something I've never used before. And so I'm like, okay, I guess I'll try this out. Cause I've for years, I've been told this is the best deal in gaming, best deal in gaming, mm -hmm. check it out, which by the way, so I played a few games on it and I could definitely see the appeal. Like, Oh, beautiful. It, I it's, love it. it's so nice. Like I played hi-fi rush on it. I thought it was incredible. I played uh plague tale requiem. Cause I love the first mm -hmm. one, played the second one. It was incredible. Mm -hmm. And then I played atomic heart. And I have found myself, I was excited about the game and it was an opportunity for me to save money. So I didn't have to buy it. I love Bioshock. I love, I've played all three of them. Uh, one, two and infinite. Uh, I've played prey. So I like these kind of, what was that phase for with prey? Prey, prey was a, uh, prey was an interesting one. I can't say directionally, which way I feel, but I mean, I felt like a prey when I played it. I loved Prey. I well, let me phrase that. I liked both the 2006 and the 2017 version of Prey. Like I thought they were both fun games. Uh, though I hated the mimics, brought me so much paranoia. Um, Moon Crash DLC I thought was great, but I'm playing Atomic Heart, and I don't think I've ever played a game that I just felt was just a giant bunch of okay. Yeah, I don't know how you managed to summarize the entire game in a single word that we use every single day of our lives, but yes, it was just okay. Like, I don't I only have like two more days as we're recording this, and I don't know if I'm gonna finish it, but it's like I've never really had the urge to keep going. And the thing is, like, I don't know what it is. Because it, I, maybe it's, like, the main character that I found very just kind of... Bleh. Bleh, yeah. Like, Bleh. it's like he wants to be Deadpool, but at the same time, like... He's not. He's not. Like... And I don't know, I how, mean, the, I don't know how this conversation is, considering the fact that we're talking about a game that came out, like, months ago. Considering, like, all the good stuff that came out. But it's like, I just tried this for a little bit, and I just, like... All I can just think of is just, eh. Well, I mean, I it, I gave it a shot because I saw, you know, Thigh's crushing skull causing me to die in the trailer or the little teaser, and I'm like, oh, yeah, please, absolutely sign me up. And then, you know, you get past that, and you're like, it's a game. Yes. Like, I, I never, sometimes when I'm at school, I'll think, and I'm like, I just, you know, I'm like playing something 
Typically, actually, lately, uh, I went back to Fallout 4, and I got the DLC for it, which I hadn't played, surprisingly. Oh, wow. Mostly because like, I could never really tell myself to buy the DLC. Like, I'm like, come on, it's not worth it. But I finally was like, screw it, I'm going to do it. So I've been, like, hard. I'm like, yeah, let me re- start a new file. We'll just crush it, go out, do everything. Um, And I find myself wanting to play the game when I'm at school, where I'm like, oh, man, I can't wait to get home mm-hmm. and play the game. Atomic Heart was like, I would open my Xbox, I'd be on the couch chilling, and I'd be like, hmm. Yeah, I could play Atomic Heart right now. Or I could literally play anything else. And I'm like, oh, I feel like I should play because it's not a bad game. It's it's not a bad game. Yeah. And I'm like sitting there having that discussion with myself, and I'm like, Ugh, do i do that it's like having it's like having continuous missionary sex and you're like it's not bad it's great really but like in the realm of truly spectacular it's just okay it's a good ac- that was a fantastic analogy by the way you i cannot, don't know if that is you can't you can't say it wasn't that is i can't say it was an analogy in the same way that i can say Atomic Heart is a game. Yeah, that's what I just said. Oh, but I, I compared it to a very basic position of sexual intercourse. My whole thing is, like, when I played Atomic Heart for a little bit, I didn't feel the need to keep coming back to it. The same, The same cannot be said about... Uh, I played the Ghost of Tsushima DLC... And I blew through it. Reverse cowgirl. It's so... <laughs> and so... It's like... I, I have no... I, I don't know where I'm going with on this anymore. You're trying to... I don't know if you're trying to dodge the analogy or if you're trying to agree with me subtly or disagree with me overtly. But nonetheless, I maintain that the, it's a correct analogy. And it's like, yes, I will go back to it. There's nothing stopping me from that. I I enjoyed it enough to say I'll open it if I see it. But I don't know if it was driven by the fact of I just like playing games and I felt like I should do it or if it was genuinely like a I really do want to do this right now. Missionary. It's 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 enjoyable. I like it. Yes, okay. It's okay. But there's other, there's so much breadth to the scope that it could have been, and it and it's just this, and you're like, all right, I've got nothing bad to say about this. I I can find pleasure in this right now, and you don't know what I'm talking about now. Now you're like talking about the game. What's he talking about? I hate how much I'm slowly coming around to your analogy. <laughs> I'm telling you, it is like the perfect analogy. It's you don't say no to it. You're not like someone offers. You're not going to say, nah, I no, I hate that. Or you're not going to be like, mm, I don't know, man. I, I got this like bottle to stick my finger in. Maybe I should go do that instead. You're going to be like, yeah, OK, yeah, I, I guess I could do that right now. I got some time. Uh, I'm kind of I'm kind of in the mood to play something. I'm kind of in the mood to do something. Sure. Why not? But then it's not like you're driven to it where you're at home or you're, you know, you're, you're in your car and you're like, sweet mother of molasses, I am. I can't wait to get home right now because you're not you're not thr- you're not driven by the by the deep primal need to do like a thing where you're hanging from the ceiling by Velcro and candles are in your mouth and you're not sure what you're about to do if you're about to spontaneously combust because you're coated in kerosene. But you do know that it's about to be exciting and you want to do it. So, you know, in comparison, the Ghost of Tsushima is kind of one of those things where it's like, yeah, you know, but this, this was, this was, this was vanilla. And that's okay. Sometimes vanilla is good, but it was vanilla. I have nothing to say to you right now, and I just want to change the subject. Chase Bunker. As Master Chief said, you've got to finish the mission. So it's like, as hard as the game is, nothing is harder than my Kyle Helmstetter. 
You're really proud of that, aren't you? No, I'm really not. This is that game show. So as we start recording this, uh, the Steam sale has just gone live. The Steam summer sale is going down. There's a lot of good deals right now. Mm -hmm. Um, Two of them that I cannot recommend enough. First off, Death Store is on sale for $7.99. It's one of my top games of uh, 2022, or uh, I believe it's 2021. Either way, it was one of my top games. Just take my word for it. Was, for it. Life. it was a top game, huh? It was a top game. Just trust okay. me on that. I, I forgot which year it came out, and I want to say it was uh, 2021. I could be mistaken. I am right. It is 2021. Good. Excellent research done by me. But also, another one is Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy that also came out. It was also one of my top games of 2021. Is $17.99. Ah, you keep telling me to play that, and I like I really want to play it. I just you like need to. Every, every time I I so it's like it's downloaded. I have it. It's on Game Pass for for those of you that like Game Pass. Mm-hmm. Got it on there. I'm ready to play it. Every single time that I have it ready. I see another game that I really want to play too. And mm-hmm. I don't know if it's like it just wins out, but I like I look at it and I'm like, uh mm, I don't know, man. This one just seems like it'll be there shorter. So I just I end up instinctively going to it and I always end up looking at Marvel when I was or the or Guardians when I sign off and I'm like, I should play this. I need to play this. Everybody tells me it's really good. Oh yeah it's fantastic like it had no reason being this great especially with like how poor the marketing was behind it like i i cannot recommend that game enough to people like especially since it's a very it's a very linear story driven game so you're gonna go through it like probably within a few days so and i know for you you don't have a lot of time so you probably won't be able to like binge it but I just remember like sitting down and for like a week and I was playing it for like maybe about a few hours a day and I just got through it and it was just so good. Like I know as we talked about um, Atomic Heart and how we just kind of had to force ourselves to play this. I wasn't this way with Guardians of the Galaxy. Like Guardians of the Galaxy, it like where you know how when you watch somebody else play a character that you love whether it be like in doctor who when there's different iterations or if there's a different james bond you know how you're just like you always associate somebody else's james bond you don't want you don't like it when other people are that character i think some people kind of got that way with this iteration how star lord wasn't chris pratt dave batista wasn't drax but like these voice actors do a great job as their respective characters that is, I, I think you hit spot on the head with video game, or actually movie translated to video game kind of characters. It's like the exact reason that I never went and played the Marvel, uh, op- like, I can't say it's open world, but you know the Marvel game that came out that was really hyped up? Oh, Avengers? Yes. Okay. And it got a lot of hype, and it didn't it didn't look bad visually. I think mm-hmm. the story mode was a little rough, or something about it was kind of rough because it didn't score very well. But um, it is the voice acting for me. Like I, it's hard for me to look at Thor. Mm-hmm. Even this is going back into like the Marvel Ultimate Alliance, which I had never played until after I saw like the first few Marvel movies. And even those games are older; those are like three sixty games. Yeah. Um, I still Weak. could it was hard to play Iron Man not hearing, you know, Robert Downey Jr. Yes. It was almost like a turnoff. I'm like, oh boy, is this is this sacrilegious? Like, can I do this? Am I allowed to play, you know, Thor and it not be Chris Chris Hemsworth? That okay. was the one though it's funny you say Thor because I, I I know that we may have discussed it in the previous episode. I'm not sure, but like when I played the demo for Marvel's Avengers the one that kept turning me off was Thor. And I think it was just because like, this sounds too godly in a way. Mm -hmm. And so, and and I think that might've just been me saying, I want Chris Hemsworth and only Chris Hemsworth to be my Thor. And I think that's a problem that we deal with a lot now. And I think um, that's also part of the reason why people didn't play guardians of the galaxy. Also because the marketing for it was very poor. Like, it felt it, second-handed to, to the Marvel, uh, to the Avengers game. Yes. Honestly. Well, they're suppo- there's a, okay, so this isn't spoilers, but there is a part of the game that you see, like, it's connected. 
but I had a feeling that they were going to evolve that in later games. I'm not sure, but like it was like Guardians of the Galaxy was a game that nobody asked for. And when it came out, it was largely over underwhelming. It's like, okay, cool, whatever. But then slowly but surely, like reviewers started saying, oh, wow, this is actually really good. And hey so, guys, this is a good game. Yes, yeah, so, and it, that's what it felt like. It just felt like nobody thought this game was going to be good. Like they thought, hey, Avengers, Guardians of the Galaxy, one of these games is going to be really great, and one of them is going to be largely okay. If I just give you those two things right now, what do you think it's going to be? I definitely would have thought it was Guardians is mainly okay, and yeah. Avengers is very, very good. Yes, yes, and so. I think when people saw that Avengers was largely okay, they thought, okay, the same thing's going to happen with uh, Guardians, and it's far from the truth. I can't recommend it enough. I think you need to try it, especially if it's on sale right now. Like, it's on Game Pass, definitely get it. It's on Steam sale right now, definitely get it. Like, it's worth your time. It's worth your money. Dang, I, that, was a, that was a good pitch. I feel I feel inclined to play it now. Yeah. Um, I will also say... Shout out to you know, obviously friend of the show. I wish, but Chris Hensworth. I mean, listen, man, you made Thor really. You did really good with Thor, even if the writing for the movies was a little, you know, mm -hmm. its own entity. I wish he was a friend of the show. That'd be cool. That would be cool. Um, that would be cool. I you want me to try to make an effort to try to get him on the show? Uh, you know what? I'd be. I would almost wonder if it was really him if he was on the show with me. I also wouldn't know what to say. Like. You know, what do you uh what do you like to do in your free time? Do you how heavy do you lift? Uh I still gotta watch if, uh Love and Thunder. I haven't got a chance to watch that. You know what? You're gonna hear a lot of things about it. Personally, and this is personally, I enjoyed it. Okay. I, the comedy was over the top for me. They they again they kind of tried to pigeonhole Thor to be a funnier character mm -hmm. and he does that naively. I do think that the movie itself had probably too many lighthearted moments for the fact that it was actually a pretty damn dark movie. Um the writing was okay. Like it wasn't. I don't know. It, like they they ultimately take Thor and they kind of turn him into a joke every time. But I do think that it was a good movie. Um, you know, I watched it on Disney Plus, so yeah. it was free for me. But I have a hard you know. time. I think ever since leaving the movie theater, I've seen movies like fewer and fewer times in the theaters. Like it, it's mm. tough for me to go now, especially since like, well, I mean, I guess now like there's a lot more movies that I want to watch because the, you know, the summer hits are coming out, but like, yep. I've, I missed out on, uh, I've so far missed out on guardians three, the dungeons and dragons movie. Yeah. I, didn't um, see either of those. I had Dr. Strange's latest one. Uh, I never saw no way home. Like there's a lot of like good movies that I've just missed out on uh the last two i you know it's funny i've actually been to the movies in the past few months more than i was since i left the movie theater as well um i saw the super mario movie i didn't see that too fantastic i loved it I, it did it's crazy people are like oh it's so childish i'm like okay bro but it was made for kids like let's yes. dial it back mm -hmm. it's a it's it was made for kids very good though loved it voice acting was surprisingly really good can't blame chris pratt at all he really actually did a good job everyone did except maybe maybe not so sure about donkey kong uh, well yeah uh, that's the uh, south rogan like i i feel yeah. like south rogan i feel like all he would do is just like throw barrels and just go <laughs> and like that's about it that is exactly what he did. And he did say, he did come out in an interview and say, I'm not doing voice acting. He's like, I'm not changing my voice. I am Seth Rogen. So you know what? I respect that he was open with it, and they still did it. And it is kind of funny to watch Donkey Kong as Seth Rogen throw barrels and laugh. <laughs> but still, good movie. Would enjoy, would recommend. I will probably, I might buy it. I don't know. I'm on the fence about it. Hey Mario, what? I got a flower for you. <laughs> like whatever, like not, not a terrible Seth Rogen laugh, but uh, it, it needs work. It, it needs it a little bit of work. Does, it, it does. It needs some cleaning up. I'll, yeah. I'll give you that. Like yeah. a little bit of shears in the hedges. That was one of the um, things that I got pissed off about was just seeing Seth the Rogen. discord. No, no, uh, just the voice acting. <sighs> um, uh, a lot of people just hate on Chris Pratt for just no reason. And so oh, they, they got some reasons. Listen, they've got some reasons. 
And so he's got he's he's got his whole thing. Yeah, he he's got a thing apparently. He's got his whole thing. And so like they'll hate on his voice acting, and it's just like, what do you want him to do? The Italian stereotype, like. <sighs> No, it was a, so it was weird because when you when he he came out of an interview and said I'm doing like this you know this is a this is a deeply because he said he's like his family heritage is Italian so he was like yeah this is like a real personal thing for me I want to kind of follow in that like mindset and and, and honor it et cetera et cetera and then um then they released like that teaser trailer of it with him mm-hmm. in it and his voice was literally his and everybody was like are you kidding me? Like, didn't you just say you were going to voice act and it's just your voice? So it was a lot of negative reception right off the bat. Mm -hmm. But I will say the scene that he had that was in the teaser trailer, that was in the movie itself, the voices were completely different. He did voice act, not only for that scene, but the whole movie. Like, he did well. I I personally cannot complain about how he did. I thought he did good. Okay. Um, yeah. and we'll talk about this in the next episode because I know that you've seen it and I just saw it, uh, Spider-Man across the Spider-Verse. I just can saw you, that. Can you watch Spider-Man? Are you able to watch Spider-Man without like pissing your pants? I will save that for the next episode. That's uh-huh. a good teaser for our next episode, which is going to be our hundredth episode. So, uh, it is a thing that oh. I did not think we were going to reach. But Man. by God, we somehow are going to do it. It'd be great if like just something happened to one of us right now. Just like as I'm promoting, like yeah, we're gonna reach it. It's like it's the horror movie trope. You... It's the horror movie trope of don't worry, I'll be right back, and then they're just killed off immediately. Yeah, are you asking for one of us to go and get something done to us, or like what are you saying? No, I'm just saying it's just like I'm getting all excited for. It. I'm like I probably shouldn't because like watch something happen and we never get the 100th episode. <sighs> I would expect you to honor me if I died and do the hundred episode anyway. What would Just you put like a? What would like you a, have done then? If you died? Yeah. Uh, well, I don't know have the password to log in, so that's I guess true. I would, nope. I guess I would make a hundred episodes of my own show and then dedicate the one hundredth episode to to okay. you. Okay. I, I appreciate that. This really yeah. took a dark turn. I would have called it game show of that or uh, that show of games. There we go. That show of games. There you go. That show of games. Yep. There you go. I appreciate that. Anyway, that's it for us today. Uh, all the music you heard on this show is courtesy of the band Power Glove. Uh, for music, tour dates, and merch, check out powergloveband.com. You can follow me on Twitter at Chase Bunker. You can follow Kyle on Instagram at Scandinavian underscore sensation. Uh, if you are watching this on YouTube, youtube.com slash that game show. Feel free to you know, subscribe to us as well. And I guess hit the bell so you know when things are happening because I don't trust the audio platform. Anyway, thank you all very much for listening. For Kyle Helmstetter, I'm Chase Bunker. We'll talk to you all in the next episode. Hi. Thanks for listening. Make sure you check out more episodes on iTunes and on our YouTube page, youtube.com forward slash that game show. Follow us on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash that game show.